welcome to Power Query is Taking Over. My name is Laura Graham Brown, more commonly known as Laura GB. I've been a consultant and a trainer and an agony aunt and a developer, all sorts of combinations of all sorts of things, working mostly with Microsoft products for at least 20 plus years. I'm not confessing to any more. My Twitter handle is Laura GB. I'm quite active there. I also have a blog called Hatful of Data. And I also have a YouTube channel. I regularly post links to those on Twitter and on LinkedIn. So what is Power Query? Well, it's a way of taking data from all sorts of places, Excel, Access, SharePoint, MailChimp, you name it, we can do it. And transforming it into a form that's usable for putting into Excel, that's where it started, and then a Power BI report, or to use in Power Automate, or even to store the data in CDS. So it's written in a language called M that's not the most friendly in the world to write, but the Power Query interface includes some ribbons which will write most of the M code for you. In fact, most people don't ever have to touch it. So what does Power Query do? Well, our first demo is going to be taking a whole bunch of files and within a few button clicks, and I really do mean a few button clicks, transforming it into a one list, which can be refreshed when there's new files. Our next example is going to be taking an Excel file, which looks very pretty and was, trans was, was designed by somebody easy to maintain, but not easy to report off. And Power Query will transform it so that it can be used in a Power BI report. Our next example is going to be taking data from a SQL Server database, which, OK, the data is quite nicely structured, but to put it into an email. So we're going to use Power Automate to include some Power Query to transform it, to summarize it, and to change that list of data on the left into that little table inside an email on the right without too much um, coding or struggle. Our final example is going to be taking a website that's based off an XML file and taking data from there and transforming it into store inside CDS. And that again is going to be a query that can be refreshed on a regular basis to put the latest exchange rates into CDS. So without much further ado, let's go and have a look actually at Power Query in action inside a demo. So our first demo is going to be combining files and put them into a single list. So here we have a folder full of files. They're all comma separated files and they're actually the joining, they're actually the attendance logs from Teams meetings. So we want to combine them into one list. So into Excel, the data ribbon, and we're going to go and get data. And from file, we're going to pick from folder. And it asks you for a folder path. We're going to click browse. And I'm going to navigate down to SQL bits, to meetings. There we go. And we're going to click OK. And it shows me the list of all the files. I'm going to click Transform Data, which is where it'll take you into Power Query. So quick tour of Power Query. It's pretty much the same everywhere we go. Over on the left hand side, we have the list of queries. In the middle, it shows you the data. And on the right hand side is the query settings where we've got the properties 
and we've got the applied steps. Here, we've only got one step, but we're going to write some more. And at the top here, we've got the ribbons, which have lots of buttons to help you get there. You very rarely have to write the formulas. The for I've got a formula bar showing. Under the view ribbon, there is a tick box, which means you can show or hide it. So, all we're interested in, in this particular instance, is this content column that has the binary in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on to home and I'm going to go for choose columns. And we're going to unselect and I'm just going to pick content and I'm then going to click OK. And we're then going to click to expand the combine the files. OK, so that's what this little button in the top right corner does. And this takes a little while for it to work through evaluating the query and actually to write some code for us. And there you are, it shows us a sample file and I'm just going to click OK. And there we go. We've got our three columns of data, their name, the action and the timestamp. And I'm going to do some very simple things here. First thing is user action. I don't care whether they joined and left. I just care that they joined. So I'm going to remove all the left lines. The timestamp, I don't really give a monkey's about what time they joined the meeting. I just care that they joined on that day. So I'm going to highlight that column. And on the transform ribbon, under the date button, there are all sorts of things that we can do, but I'm going to pick date only. And there we go. That's done. The helper queries are for it to write all the steps. And you can now see, look at all those steps it wrote for me. And I added a couple at the bottom. And then I'm going to click on the home. And I'm going to click close and load. And there we go. In less than five minutes, I've managed to combine all those files and put them into Excel. And should somebody add a new file for the August files, we will just be able to click refresh and it will add that data in. So let's move on to our second demo. Our second demo is taking an Excel file and putting it into a Power BI report. But the data isn't quite in the format we want. So here we are in the Excel file, typical Excel file, it's pivoted data. So we've got teams down the side and we've got months across the top and values in the middle. I don't want it like that. I want it in three columns with team, month, value. So this file is stored in OneDrive. So the first thing we're going to do is get the path to it. So I'm going to go to the file tab. And under the info, there is the path at the top there, and I can copy the path. If you don't have a copy path button, click on that path and it'll offer you to copy it. We're then going to close Excel. So here we are in Power BI in one of our template reports. OK, it's got a few a few visuals laid out, but no data. So although our file was in Excel, we're not going to click on the Excel because that's for a local Excel file. Our Excel file is stored in the web. So we're going to go to get data and we're going to go to web. And it asks us for a URL. We're going to paste in that URL that we just copied. Now, on the end of that URL is a question mark web equals one. We don't want that. That's going to break it. So I'm going to do a backspace just to get rid of those. And then I'm going to click OK. Now, the advantage of going to from the web 
means that when I publish this up to the service, the file is on the web so it can refresh. So up comes the navigator window. And there we are, we've got a sheet one, which I can tick. And there we are, we get a little preview and transform data. That takes us into Power Query. So here we are in Power Query. Now, it works out some steps for us, just like it did in Excel. So we've got the source, which was the Excel file. We're navigating down into the tab that we wanted. We're promoting the header. Now we've got to change type. Now change type causes all sorts of problems along the way and just clutters the place in my opinion. So I'm going to delete that step. Be aware, I've deleted that step. There is no undo, there's no control Z. It doesn't work. Okay, so you've got to be careful. So the first thing I want to do is unpivot. But actually no, looking at my data, look, there's a total row. Let's get rid of that first. So on the team column, there's a drop down arrow and I'm just going to untick total and click OK. And what that does is it adds a filtered row step. And if I click on the cog on there, we can even see what that filter was. OK, does not equal total. So now we've got our team column. I now want to unpivot the data. So I highlight team column. I get a transform. Unpivot columns, drop that arrow down and unpivot other columns. And what that will do when I click onto there, as if by magic, we get a column of the months and a column of the values. So very quickly, we can see that's a month and that's a value. Let's do one thing. Let's change that into a actual date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that column. I'm going to add a column column from examples from selection. Okay. Column from examples, incredibly powerful tool. So what I can do into here is let's firstly rename that to be start. And then we're going to put in what I want this date to be. So I want this to be 01 hyphen Jan hyphen 2020. Press return. And there you are. It guesses the calculation. So what it's done is it's done text combine. You probably know that as a concatenate um, to combine those things up, including the attribute column. I can click OK. And there we are, we have a start column with a date in it, okay? But actually it doesn't think it's a date. If you look, that ABC says it's still text. So I'm just gonna quickly click on that ABC and change it to a date. And then the next thing we're gonna do is let's just add one more column. So I'm going to go to the add columns with that start date under date, if you look in month, there we are, we've got end of month. And I'm just going to rename that column to be finish. And I'm also going to rename the value column to be contracts. Now, the last thing that should happen is, is to make sure that all of my columns here have proper data types. ABC123 is not. Now, the quickest way to do this is Control A picks all your columns. And then under Transform, there's a Detect Data Type. And there you are. It's done them all. So now we're ready to go back to Home and go to Close and Apply. takes a moment to load the data. And there we are, my data has loaded on the right hand side, you can see the columns there. So what we're going to do 
is we're just going to quickly update my visuals so my chart can have the start date on the axis and the number of contracts as the values. Let's click in to the top box here where we have a slicer. So into that slicer, I'm going to put in the team. And in the next box down, we have a large data card and I'm just going to put in the number of contracts into there. So there we are. We have a report. I can report on each team by clicking on the slicer, etc. And that was all done with a bit of Power Query behind the scenes. So that's our second demo. For my third demo, I want to show how we can reuse the M code and how, although there are different places for Power Query, they are using in lots of the times they're using the identical code. So starting in the report we created in demo two, I'm going to quickly go to transform data. And we've got all our steps here that we did to take our code all the way from that source, which was the Excel file, all the way through to what we've got at the end there. Now, that's a number of steps. You might want to make that reusable so that other people could come up with it. Now, one way of doing that is data flows. So I've done the code once. So I'm now going to go to from the home ribbon, advanced editor. And this gives you a chance to see all the M code. OK, M code is not the most friendly language to read. So I can take all of that. I'm going to highlight it all. And I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to switch over to the Power BI service. OK, so here I am in Workspace Beta and I can go for a new and I can go for a data flow. Data flow is a brilliant way to prepare data once and let people connect to it. So I can define a new entity. And it offers you all the different places you could go and get data from. OK, and there are all sorts here, such as folder like we, we saw earlier um, and Excel, etc, etc. But actually, we've written our query. So I'm going to go for a blank query. And I'm going to take away all that code, the four lines of code that are there, and I'm going to paste in the code. So these are all the steps. And then I'm going to click next. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to go and have a look at that and it's going to try and work it out. Now, its first question is, how do you want to connect? Because it's asking you to connect to some data on OneDrive. So I'm going to configure the connection. Now, I've connected up before, so it understands my authentication is an organizational account. OK, here are the here are the details, but we're going to go for an organizational account um, and I'm already signed in. OK, if you aren't signed in, there's a little sign in button that appears and I click connect. And here we are. There is my data ready. OK, it's got all the steps in there and we've got more actions we could add at the top here. So there's very similar ribbons. There's a transform ribbon. There's an add column ribbon. What's missing in this particular in, in the online um, Power Query at the moment are some of the features like column by example, etc. But they're getting closer and closer to including all the features. So the parity between the two will be the same. So I can then click 
save and close. And let's give it the name SQL Bits Demo and click Save. I could click Refresh now. And if I come back into my workspace beta, there you are, there is my data flow. Now that can be connected to from Power BI to create a report, okay? So someone doesn't have to repeat the work you've done. So that's our first example of Power Query Online. So let's move on to another demo. So for our next demo, we're gonna show a different side of Power Query. And this is where Power Query has been introduced into Power Automate. Now in Power Automate, it will fetch data for you, which you can then work through. You could do all sorts of things that in our example, we're gonna send an email. So here I am in a solution called SQL Bits. We're gonna go for a new flow. So for simplicity's sake, we're going to go for a manually triggering a flow. And I'm going to add in a new step. And if I actually search for Power Query, you'll see you get one um, part up there which, which mentions Power Query. And it's under the SQL Server Connector. So not only can it only connect to SQL Server, but also it's premium. You get a little license to do this one. So let's click on transform data using Power Query. And if it's the first time you've connected to a database, you'll have to put in all the database details and all your login. So we're gonna click create one. So I've done that already. So I'm gonna click create query. And it connects up to my database. And I'm just going to go for one table in this example. I'm just going to go for expenses. And there we are. I've got a set of expenses coming in there. And I've got a transform data down here. Again, transform data. Please start Power Query. And here we are in Power Query. Now, it is very similar to the Power Query desktops we've seen. We've got a home ribbon, a transform ribbon, add column ribbon, etc. And a, a view ribbon as well. There are some features missing, such as add column by example, that's missing. But there are new updates happening all the time. And they will eventually get that. So I want to do a couple of things. I just want to show a couple of things. Um, nulls means that there isn't any data. Um, but sometimes nulls have problems in doing calculations. So what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight the, the miles and I'm going to highlight amount. And then on the transform ribbon, we're going to go for replace values. Replace values. And I'm going to look for nulls and I'm going to place them with zero and click OK. And as you can see on the right hand side in our applied steps, there you are, it's added a replaced value and they are no more nulls. I've got values. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't care about how many miles they did. I want to know how much that's going to cost me. So I'm highlighting the miles column on transform. I'm going to go to standard and I'm going to multiply. And I'm going to multiply it by my mileage rate, which happens to be 40p a mile. So then we click OK. And there we are. It's 
taken those values and times it by four by 0.4. So that works. I can then add my miles and my amount columns together. So I highlighted both of them. I'm going to add a column and then under the standard, I'm going to add them. OK. And there you are, I've got an addition column. So I've got an expense type and I've got a column type here. Now, actually, all I want to know is travel was this much, hotel was this much, other was this much. So we're then going to go back to the transform ribbon and there it's a group by. So we're going to group by the expense type. I'm going to have a total column which is going to be the sum of my new column I just added, which was called addition. And we're then going to click OK. And so there we are. I've got my three rows of data. I've got my total in there. That's going to work. I like that. So we're going to take that and I'm going to click create. And there we are, we've got it and we've now got an edit query button. So let's just do a quick send an email off that. So I'm going to do a new step. And I'm going to convert it first into a HTML table. So I type in HTML. They are under the data operations. I've got create HTML table. And what do we want to do it from? So I click into there. A control space bar to bring up the dynamics and there we go I've got the body value so that's what's returned we're then going to add a, another new step and this is going to be an email okay so we want to send an email Send an email. Who to? So I'm just going to use one of my other demo accounts. So I've got a demo account called Lego. Um, and I'm just going to call this expenses. And into the body here. Now, I'm not good at writing pretty emails. My emails are very blunt. We're going to put in a control space bar into there. And I'm going to put my HTML table into there and I'm then going to click save. I'm going to just rename my to expenses email. And we're going to click on test. I'll perform the trigger action. Let's save and test. And click continue. And let's run the flow. Click done. And there we go. My flow ran successfully. So let's go and have a look in Lego's inbox. And there we are. We've got an email. Let's click on it. And so we can see it. And there we are. We've got now it's not the prettiest email. And we'd need to do some things with maybe putting some decimal places and some numbers into there. But that's taken data from an, the SQL server and it's put it into an email using Power Query. So we have one more demo. My final demo is how Power Query can be used in another different way. And this time it's to import data into the common data service. 
and this is so that it can be refreshed on a regular basis. So we've already set an entity up. It's important that you set the entity up beforehand. So here is exchange rates. And if I click into here, just to prove that we are doing this correctly. And if I click on to data, there are no records found. OK, so we're going to go back into our part here and I'm going to go to new and we're going to go for a new data flow, which is all the way down here. Now, Dataflow wants a source of data to come up with. OK, so we've got a website. And here we are, we've got currencies, they've got a code and we've got a rate. We basically want that code and the rate. So I'm going to minimise that down. And we're going to click on new data flow. And let's call it import exchange rates and click create. So going quickly back to that website, if you look at the top here, it's an XML file. So I'm going to copy that URL, come back into here and have a look. And there we are. There is XML and file path or URL. So we're going to paste into there. Now, I've already connected to this once as a test to this demo. And so it sorted out my connection. It will ask you to set up a connection and authentication. I've put as a, it, it's anonymous because it's a public site. So I can then click next. And up comes Power Query. OK, and in this case, Power Query doesn't look particularly friendly. We can't see any data, OK, apart from this one row that's got these weird tables in it. So what we're going to do is the value one is the one I want to explore. So I'm going to use the Choose Columns. And I'm going to keep value. And then I'm going to expand value. So there's a little button in the top right hand corner and asks you, well, what columns do you want? OK, so we're going to untick that and I'm going to bring in, I think I need name and value. Use original column as prefix. Turn that one off. OK. And there we are. We've got a whole load in here. Now I've got a whole load of items here. OK, but actually the first eight rows of data there I don't want. So I'm going to remove rows. And I'm going to remove top rows and we're going to get, get rid of eight of them. And then I've got a value one here, so I'm going to expand that. And this time and we're going to we're going to try name and value again. And let's not keep the original column name as prefix because we really don't need that. And there we are. So I've got title in there and it's got a rate and it's got a, a, a part in there. But I've also got a publication date. I've got a target currency and a rate. So actually I'm going to filter name one. And uh, I'm going to go and pick but we wanted the public. We wanted the date. We wanted the exchange rate. And I wanted the target currency. And let's click OK. So there we go. We've got it. Now, actually, what we want to do is we want to be able to pivot this data. So here comes a trick of being able to turn that 
those three blocks there, so this data across here, into three columns. So bear with me. We're going to add a column, and it's going to be an index column from zero. And then we're going to add another column, a custom column, that is going to be based off the index. So I can double click on index and it'll put it in there. And then I can do a calculation. So number dot mod, and I'm going to take the index and base it off three. So click OK to that. So that's going to basically take off the remainder from dividing it by three. Now, there's lots of different ways to do what we've just done. But if you look there, all of these, those first three rows all have a zero. The next three rows have three, etc. throughout the data. So this is quite a nice way. I'm then going to remove the index column. So if we go back into home, we're going to, so I can get rid of name now and I can get rid of index. So we're going to choose columns. We're going to get rid of name and we're going to get rid of index and click OK. So now we want to pivot our data. So I am going to click onto name there and onto transform. And into there, there is a pivot column. OK, so use names in the current column to create new columns. So pivot column and it says, where is the value column? Well, funny enough, it's called value, which is quite convenient and click OK. So that's quite a lot of little steps to put together to transform the data. But once you get your head around these things, it becomes easier and easier and easier. So I now have a publication date, a target currency and an exchange rate. So what I'm going to do on the publication date is I am going, so I'm going to go and convert these ones. So that custom is a whole number. That publication date is a date and time. I've got a target currency, which is going to be text. And I've got an exchange rate, which is going to be a decimal number. And then we can click next. And it asks us, well, where do you want to put this data? So we're going to load to an existing entity. And my entity. Now, you need to remember on entities in here, you've got to get the prefix. So I know that I made it inside a solution. So it's got the LGB before it. So there we are, LGB exchange rates. And they are, it puts its display name underneath. Now it asks you which column is going to populate which one. So I've got currency there target currency, exchange rate is exchange rate, and published is pub date. Delete rows that no longer exist means that it, will obey, it won't duplicate rows and it will stick with the keys that have been saved within to our, um, with, within our um, entity. So, I'm then going to click next. Refresh. I could refresh automatically. I could say, well, let's refresh every day at 
let's go for nine o'clock in the morning and let's click create. So there is my import exchange rates and you can see currently in progress there is a refresh happening. So we'll wait for that to complete. So there we are, it's completed and the next refresh is tomorrow. So let's go for back into my solution. And let's go to our exchange rates. And look under data. And there we are. We have a full set of exchange rates that have been loaded, ready to be used inside a Power App, Power Automate, etc. Thank you for coming to my session. I hope you've enjoyed the demonstrations. We've used Power Query to create reports, to update data, to send an email, etc. If you've got any questions, please ask. If you have any questions after the event, please reach out to me on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Happy to chat about any data challenges. I'm always up for a challenge. So I am Laura GB and this has been Power Query is taking over. Take care now.